Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode. Um, it's going to be a teardown of this unit here which I picked up. Unfortunately it's not as interesting as I thought it might be. I have had a quick look inside and um, yeah it's not quite what I expected. But we're going to do a teardown on it nonetheless and uh, we'll see what's on the inside. So uh, what do we have? Uh, this is a unit that dates from um, mid 90s, I think about 1995, 1996. And as you can see on the front here, um, it's an eye tracking system. Now I believe ASL, Applied Science Labs, um, are still going and they're still in the industry of uh, eye tracking and stuff. Um, this seems to be an, an early eye tracking system that was available to uh, researchers, universities and things like that um, that needed to do eye tracking. I have no idea of, of its original cost and um, it's not complete. There would have been a bank of monitors which would have sat on top of this uh, with three CRTs in and it would have been connected to a PC as well. Uh, unfortunately I don't have any of that available, it's literally just this um, control unit. Uh, so we've got a few controls on the front, um, it's all pretty basic stuff. Uh, we have an eye um, section here with discriminators for the pupil and corneal reflection. Uh, presumably they use um, these two parameters to actually be able to track the direction that the eye is pointing in. Um, uh, these are 10 turn pots, I can tell that just because they keep going and you can they have that characteristic sound of 10 turn pots. Um, next to them we've got some switches which are for a scene. Um, so we've got a point of gaze indicator. So in an eye tracking system you generally have a camera looking at the eye and then you have another camera looking at what the subject is looking at uh, and that would be the scene. So um, there would be a, a dot or something on the screen that would indicate on the scene where the um, person is actually looking and presumably these are the controls which give you either a crosshair or a cursor um, it can either be black or white and we can reverse the image so normal or um, reverse so presumably that's just an, a color invert thing uh, or luminance invert um, we've got power section here um, so obviously the camera and the head device would uh, would need power because you have uh, you'll have infrared illumination and things like that so we've got a helmet illuminator level, illuminator power and camera power. And then uh, just over on the far side, we've got just got the main power switch. So obviously you can see this is um, a 19 inch rack. It's quite a nice, uh, quite a nice unit actually. It's probably make um, another good project box for somebody. So uh, let me turn this around so you can see the back. So as you can see, there's quite a few connections on the back here, um, which is why I was hoping that it would have been quite an interesting thing, but um, You'll see on the inside that it's um, not quite what I expected. Uh, so we have a uh, power input, um, standard IEC plug. Uh, we've got a remote illuminator power, that's a power outlet. Um, and we've got various uh, video connections, so video in from scene source, video out to external scene monitor. So these are all going to be in pairs. Um, so we've got uh, video out to scene monitor, video out to eye monitor, video in from eye camera, video in from external sync, that would be logical, um, it would allow you to sync um, multiple cameras and various things together. Um, we've got a locating camera, video in, video out, locating camera, sync out uh, there. We've got a couple of uh, DIN connectors so they, they're not actually DIN connectors, are they? They're very similar though. Looks like they've got a threaded locking system. Um, we've got a little Limo style connector there. Uh, a couple of uh, S-Video ports, although they've labeled them SVHS. It's not quite accurate that. Um, so yeah, we've got loads of video inputs and outputs on the back, which is um, completely logical. Um, over on the far side here, we have a PC interface. I've no idea what this kind of interface would have been. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess that uh, this would have been a big ribbon cable that went over and plugged into the PC, probably with um, an ISA or PCI card. So the rear panel is removable. These are not just feet for it to stand up on. Um, these are actually pull out um, quick release. 
things which allow us to take off the rear panel. So although you might just be able to see in there, it's a little bit dark, I'll um, rearrange the uh, camera and stuff in a moment, uh, but you can see that there's not quite as much in there as I thought there might be. Actually think about this, uh, probably the best way to do this is actually just to remove this top cover. Okay, so we have a, a card frame arrangement with a back plane um, that the cards plug into. There's a couple of PCBs at the front um, for holding the switches and the, um, the pots that we saw on the front. Uh, we can just see the 10 turn pots down in here and there's a load of ribbon cables which connect everything together. Um, there's a power supply down um, in this corner here. Uh, it doesn't look very big but then there's not much in here so probably doesn't need a huge amount of power. So uh, along this um, card frame there is actually um, a legend printed on to it and uh, some of the cards have names. So we have uh, CPU 1, CPU 2, CPU 3, 4, uh, CPU 5H, CPU 6, CPU 5V, HT1, HT2, HT3, HT4 and CPU 9. Obviously there's nothing in these ones so presumably that was a, some kind of option that you could have in there. So what I'm going to do is just pull out each of these cards and we'll have a quick look at them. Actually, it's probably best to start at CPU 1. So yeah, there's uh, not a huge amount on there. It's obviously not a CPU as we would uh, think. Um, so there's a, a toggle switch on this side here which says uh, dark and bright. Um, I've got a couple of, uh, well, three 10 turn trimmers there. Um, and we've got a load of 74 series logic, um, all in sockets. And it is made by um, Applied Science Labs. Um, copyright 1992. A couple of bodge wires on the back there. This is CPU 2. Again, uh, there's really not much on there at all. Um, we've got a load more bodge wires. It yes, almost looks like somebody really didn't. Uh, finish off the board on that one. Um, so this one has sync drive written on it, card EMM2, and this is dated 1984. So there's a huge difference in the uh, production date and the date of this card. So um, obviously they're reusing things from previous products. So the next one is CPU3. Again, really, really sparse. Oh, <laughs> don't you just love things like that? It almost looks like the these boards have been repurposed. I can't see somebody making that many mistakes. It looks like um, this is out of something else. Copyright 1983. Um, it's like it, it was used in a different product and they've actually, uh, it's been modded as part of the design for this system because that to me and given that there's little prototype areas here yeah I think um, it's just been repurposed and just sort of slightly redesigned so uh, this one is called um, spot X hair generator and pupil diameter um, so we've got um, XH left boundary, XH right boundary, PD, MTR, uh, some little trimmers there. So yeah, really, really simple. I mean, there's not a lot on this. It's just 7.4 series logic and just a handful of devices on there. Uh, this one is uh, CPU 4. Um,
Don't seem to be a date on this one. Nope. So we've got a few more devices on here. Um, yeah, it's all 7.4 series logic. Got um, an oscillator there, 10 megahertz. 7474, seven, these are all dated 1995. Yeah, again, interesting one. Um, these are 74 LS374. Oh, we've got a bodge wire that's become detached. So it probably doesn't work. Next card is CPU 5H. Right, uh, this is the CPU 5H card. Um, again, not a lot on here. Um, horizontal, vertical output and display circuit. Uh, we've got a couple of trimmers, uh, some 7.4 series and these um, SW7485J um, ICs and they are 4-bit magnitude comparators so uh, you have a 4-bit value and it will tell you if it, it will compare whether it's greater than, equal to or less than um, a some kind of value, that's interesting. Uh, so CPU six. Oh, looks like we've got. A, is that a retention arm? Stop the cards falling out. Again, mostly seven four series logic. In fact, it's all seven four series logic. Some more trimmers. Uh, this one's titled CPU6, uh, Comp Input Timing and Control CIR. So, yeah, that's all um, video input stuff. Um, no date on that, but the um, the IC dates are 1994. So, yeah, a uh, ton of, of bodge wires, although I don't think these are bodge wires in, in that sense. I think they are. Um, these boards have been repurposed, I think, for this. That's what it looks like to me anyway. And we've got uh, one slightly larger IC on here by Texas Instruments, uh, SN74154N. And that is a 4 line to 16 line decoder demultiplexer. And what's card in this section? Um, it's same as the horizontal, vertical output, and display circuit. So we've got a second one of those. We've just got one last card in the end here. fitting that one so it's a prototype prototyping card um, this must be based on some standard um, backplane architecture um, if you've got cards like this I would expect so yeah this is a uh, completely purpose purpose made uh, we have CPU 9 Rev E and we've got a switch on it which is uh, labeled let me just turn the brightness down for you there So it's labelled Sony or Elmo. So yeah, not a lot to see. And that is all we've got really, apart from the back plane um, and those uh, 10 turn pots on the front, um, ribbon connect cables to connect those and the switch and stuff too. The back plane that is about it preconditioning some of the uh, the video and stuff like that um, and then it's sent to the pc um, where it's possibly captured there uh, because there doesn't seem to be anything here to actually do that kind of thing so uh, i guess that's why i was just slightly disappointed with this one i kind of hoped it might have been uh, yeah rammed full of uh, um, 
DSPs and um, lots of digital um, video capture stuff uh, and processing, but uh, unfortunately not. So uh, it's just a, just the way the uh, the lottery of doing this kind of thing works. So I'd just like to say, if anybody uh, thinks they can make use of this case, um, it could be a good project start thing for somebody. Um, we've got a nice card cage arrangement in there. This is probably based on some kind of standard bus arrangement, so that might be of use to somebody. So if you want any of this stuff, um, bob me a message in the comments or send me a an email um, which you can get through the about page on YouTube. Send me a message and I'll see what I can do. Um, it, I normally just um, pass on the cost of whatever it costs to ship. If you think you can make use of this, then yeah, send me a message and I'll see what I can do. So I'd just like to thank uh, all my patrons uh, for uh, helping support the channel and all the people who like, and uh, all the subscribers uh, and all the comments that get left. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. So uh, it probably leaves me to say thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.